السلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد Okay So our today's topic inshallah on a very important subject that every one of you needs and always uh, you know all of us need it not only the teenagers but you know all people need it which is being kind and dutiful to the parents so in the holy quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects between the command to worship him and not to associate any partner with him with the command to do good to the parents and it comes immediately you know next to the command to worship Allah alone. So in the Holy Quran we read وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And worship Allah and do not, do not associate any partners with him and do good and be kind to the parents. So next to the command to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the command to be dutiful and kind and to do good to the parents. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That your Lord has decreed that you must not worship any other, you know, one than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that you must do good to the parents. And you will not find the word wawassayna we enjoy we enjoined enjoined on man we will not find this expression used in the holy quran wawassayna except for commanding us to be good to the parents as well so this comes three times in the holy quran one time wawassayna al-insana biwalidayh we has enjoined on man to be good to his parents. And this is in Surah Luqman. And we also read, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا And we has enjoined on man to do good to the parents. And this is in Surah Al-Ahqaf. And we also read, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنًا all of them are giving the same instruction which is to that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined on man to do good to the parents. But they come in different ways and more than one time in the Holy Quran to show us the importance of being dutiful and uh, thankful to the parents and good to the parents. You know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has considered being dutiful to the parents as being the you know like you know the the most beloved good deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number one is to perform prayers on time number two is to be good to the parents because he وسلم, was once asked about what is the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this was his answer وسلم, the first deed which is the most beloved one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after embracing Islam is to perform salah on time then next to this is to be dutiful and kind and to do good to the parents and then the third one is to strive in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know even being good to the parents is equivalent to doing hajj umrah and you know, uh, striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if, if the enemies of Muslims attack them and they start, you know, the assault and take their land or, or, you know, or start to kill them or take their wealth or properties and so on, then Muslims must defend themselves, which is jihad. And in one hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallam tells us that to be dutiful to the parents, you know, gives you the same reward you get when you make these three things together Hajj, Umrah and Jihad or strive 
in the codes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one man, young man, once wanted to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him, O Messenger of Allah, I would like to go for fighting against the enemies of Islam who fight us and assault our rights and take out our lands and drive us away from our homes. But I am not able to do so because maybe he didn't have the enough means, you know, to, uh, to go, you know, for doing this striving in the cause of Allah. So the man was sad, the young man was sad because he thought that he would lose a huge reward that nothing can, you know, can replace it. No reward can be equivalent to it. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu asked him one question. Is any one of your parents still alive? The man said, yes, my mother is still alive. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, then you just do good to her, be dutiful to her, and seek Allah's word in doing so. And when you do so, then it, you will be given the reward of making Hajj Umrah and making you know, jihad or striving in the cause of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So sometimes we uh, forget this. All of us, of course, we know that we have to be dutiful to the parents. Even by our nature, we love our parents. Alhamdulillah, I have, uh, my mother is still alive, Alhamdulillah. So even not only young people like yourself, but even old people like myself, still I must be dutiful to my mother as well. And this is something in the fitrah, you know, in the nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in our hearts, has created us with, that we love our parents. But sometimes some people they love their parents but they do not uh, you know do good to them unfortunately they are ignorant of the importance of being kind to the parents and not you know annoying them of different things so just to love the parents is not enough because everyone loves his parents even those who disobey their parents or who cause troubles to their parents or who are undutiful to their parents, they love their parents. Because, you know how we know that? Because I have come across, you know, a situation that somebody was not dutiful to his mom, but he loved her so much, but he was not dutiful to her. He was, you know, just all his aim was just to go here and there to play and, you know, and to, you know, go with his friends. You know, he didn't care about his his mother, and she was old. But suddenly she passed away. Then he started to weep and to cry and to regret it so much. And, you know, he discovered that he has already missed, you know, this uh, great chance, you know, to be good to his. He wished if his mother was still alive, you know, you know to, to be able to correct his relationship with her and to show her that he really loves her. But unfortunately, of course, this can never happen. So this is the issue here. I am not speaking about just loving the parents. All of, of us, we love our parents, alhamdulillah. But we have to reflect this love to the parents in practical manner and behavior towards them. Not to do anything that cause them, you know, to be angry or sad, you know to obey them as well, because parents are always asking us to do good things which are beneficial for us. You know, the only one that will wish for you to be better than him is your father and your mother. You know, no one will be loving you more than himself, except the father and mother, you know, they always wish for the future or hope for the future of their children to be better than their own life that they have already gone through and they have already lived. So, you know, even to be dutiful to the parents, sometimes one thinks that he's busy or think that he has to enjoy his life with my friends. You know, I don't have to, uh, you know, to sit with my dad or to listen to him or to, you know, 
uh, you know, to, to wait until he finishes his conversation with me because I have a lot of things to do. I am still a young man. I, I have to enjoy my life. I have my friends. I have many things to do. Uh, I don't like to waste time with my father or with my mother. And this is very bad because when you sit with your father or your mother, you are not wasting time. You know, you are sitting with the person, you know, who cares uh, about you the most in this world. So he or she is going to tell you good things that if you consider, you will be benefited for the rest of your life. And many people, you know, whose parents or like maybe whose father or mother or both of them have already passed away, and they are like in their 50s or 60s, they're old. They still remember because they were dutiful to their parents. So, so they still remember, you know, words of their parents. That, and they still, you know, uh, are very proud that they were listening to their parents. They keep telling you, I do this this way now because I remember that when I was 16 or 17 or 14 or 12 years old or, or less, you know, that my dad told me so and so, gave me this advice, and I'm still getting benefit from it until he's 60 years old now, and he still gets benefit from the advice given to him by his dad or mom maybe 50 years ago when he was only 10 years old. So this is a great chance that you have as well. When Islam asks you to be dutiful to your parents, it is not to put load on you, to make your life difficult, but it's to help you. Because the more you consider this and the more you respect your parents and listen to them, you know, and also they will accept your discussion, you know, if you have an opinion, of course they will accept it and they will, you know, um, you know they will, you know, find uh, finally, you know, the best thing to be done if regarding a certain situation, but you must not miss their consultants. Uh, okay, so when Islam asks young men or asks people to be dutiful to their parents, this is not a load or restriction put on you, no. This is, you know, uh, something for you. Because, and as we will come to know, inshallah, uh, shortly, that when you are good to your parents, your children in, f in future, will be good to you as well so the the same you you know you do with your parents your children in the nearest future inshallah will do to you uh, so being dutiful to the parents is something good that gives you you know you get benefit from the experience of your father and mother because even logically it cannot happen or it cannot be like a, a young man or, or a young girl who is like 15 years old or 70 or even 20, you know, uh, can have the same experience of a man of 50 years old or over 50. Of course, you know, so when you, you know, listen to your parents, you get benefit from this experience of these long years. And this is good for you. And at the same time, you please your parents. And this is good for you as well, because your parents love you more and more and make dua for you more and more sincerely uh, from their heart because you are good to them and you are rewarded by Allah and you are obeyed by Allah. So all of it is about advantages. There is no one single disadvantage of being undutiful to the parent. So because of, of, the, of all these things, you know, being dutiful to the parents was even given priority by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu over doing jihad with him. Imagine that the Prophet himself وسلم, is going for jihad, for fighting people who have already started fighting against Muslims and, you know, killed them, killed some of them and did so and so. So, of course, all the companions used to have the strong desire to go with the Prophet, not to leave him alone. He is the Prophet. They loved him so much to defend Islam, firstly, and to defend the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most beloved to their hearts. So one young man once went to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, O Messenger of Allah, 
I would like to go for jihad with you. So the Prophet was going for jihad, seeking the reward from Allah and seeking the pleasure of Allah. So, you know, very nice things. Going for jihad with the Prophet, seeking the reward in the hereafter and seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when I left my parents to go with you for jihad, they became very sad because they didn't have any other one to look after them and they started to weep. So you know what did the Prophet told the man? He told him, then you go back to them and stay with them and don't make the jihad with me and let them laugh as you have caused them to weep. So, so this hadith tells us that, you know, the, the importance of being dutiful to the parents is, is so big that is even more important than doing jihad in the cause of Allah. And in another occasion, another young man also told the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, I'd like to go for jihad. The Prophet Muhammad Sallam asked him one question. Is your mother still alive? The man said, yes, my mother is still alive. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then you go and serve her for paradise is there and in, under the feet of your mother. Paradise is there, is in serving your mother. Of course, when I'm speaking about jihad and fighting the cause of Allah, you know, this, you know, the val valid jihad and valid fighting because many people sometimes, you know, as you may hear in the news, you know, they say, oh, jihad, and this is not jihad. This is not valid jihad. This is haram to be done, you know, to kill innocents, you know, and to go, you know, uh, on their own because jihad has many conditions to be met, you know, uh, firstly, but but this jihad, th this was the right jihad, the proper one with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu for people who have already started fighting Muslims, driving them away, their homes, took their lands and money. So there was no way other than, you know, to tell them, no, don't, not do this. Or, you know, otherwise they uh, would do more and more, you know, and kill all Muslims. So you have to stop them as well. Okay, you know that being dutiful to the parents is the way to paradise. Does you like to go to paradise? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> of course, every Muslim had the hope to go to paradise, yes. And to be saved from hellfire, of course. So, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, when he went to uh, Al-Mi'raj, you know, uh, the, the journey of Isra and Mi'raj. Isra was from Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, Jerusalem. And Al-Mi'raj was from Jerusalem to the seventh heaven. So the Prophet saw paradise and things happening there to people of paradise. So, you know, he heard somebody reciting Quran in paradise. So he got astonished and, and, and he asked, you know, who that person who's reciting this very nice recitation in paradise. So he was told this was Haritha ibn an numan So the Prophet said, Kadalikumul bir, kadalikumul bir, wa kana abarra nasi bi ummi. He said, Oh, that's being dutiful to the parents. You know, that's the outcome of being dutiful to the parents. For verily, Haritha ibn al numan was the most dutiful person to his mother. So, you know, it's very easy, you know, because parents are, are kind to us, you know. If you just do good to them, without doing good to them, they are kind to us. If you do good to them, if you just speak to them, they are very kind to you, you know. And you feel peace and happiness of being close to your dad or, or, or mother. And subhanAllah, it is the rahmah of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah gives us reward for this. So, we are benefit, we, we, we get many benefits in this world, world, including, you know, getting this, you know, uh, you know, good passion from the parents and love, you know, and feeling safe when we are, you know, good to them and when we are speaking to them or close to them. And we are rewarded at the same time and given a huge reward. Okay, going back to the issue of 
you know, being very busy with friends, for example, and not ready to listen to the father or the mother, you know, because I have come across many uh, friends of mine when I was on your age, and even when I was older than you, like 20, 25 also, they would listen to their friends and, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, the bad friends, and they would not listen to their parents. So, for example, their parents, you know, would try to tell them, you know, that, you know, that this thing is good, so please do it, or that thing is bad, so please, in a very nice manner. And they would not listen to this. And then when they go out, or when they would go out and meet their friends, you know, in one second, when a friend would tell them, you know, do this or that, they quickly listen to the friend. Though the friend does not have the, uh, you know, the good information and he gives, you know, the bad advice and he's taking him to the wrong way as well. But subhanAllah, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, the, sometimes some part of this is the nature of the age as well. But in Islam, we have to, you know, like for example, if man loves money, this is the nature of, of human beings, that they love money. They have big love for money. Okay, but Islam should or um, allow them or encourage them or let them be able to, mock, to make control over this huge love for money. So they don't acquire money except through halal ways. Okay, so also the nature of, of your age, to be very open with you, the nature of your age is that, you know, uh, you like, you know, to be with friends and to listen to friends more than, you know, listening to the parents. I mean, this is the general, you know, uh, trend, but, but, but those who are well disciplined and who, who know, you know, uh, the, the Islam and, you know, who, who, who try to apply it, you know, and also who are very wise, they don't do that, you know. They give everything and everyone his or its due right, you know. Okay, friends, yes, we have to be good to our friends, no problem with that. But we have to be fair. If a friend is telling me to do something wrong, I must not do it. So we must not be, sorry, Yani, like blind, no. Okay, uh, my, my parent, yes, he, da, he cannot, you know, go and play with me. Many things that my friends, you know, can, can, can do with me so I have fun and have very nice time. Yes, of course, this is because your dad is, is much older than you. He will not be able to do everything with you as your friend can do. But at the same time, be fair when, you, when he tells you something good, you know, follow it because this is for your well-being as well and because again he is the person who loves you the most he cares uh, about you you know thousand times than this friend cares about you even unfortunately many friends don't care about you at all you know so so we have to to, to struggle ourselves yes I have to tell you that you know uh, at some times, you know, you will need to do some effort, you know, to restrain yourself from just following your desire, you know, and to to listen to the parent. Because, and you have to, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, uh, you know, you have to use your good, you know, intellect and mind, you know, and to differentiate between good things and bad things. So the Prophet was once asked, oh, messenger of Allah, who is the most one deserving of my best companionship. So he said, your mother, even not your dad, but your mother. Then he was asked the same question again. He said, your mother. Then for the third time, he said, your mother as well. Then he said, your father. Then he said, and then you have to be good to the next closest and the next closest. So it's your mother. Why your mother? Because your mother is the one who, you know, uh, has, you know, 
paid the greatest, you know, uh, effort, you know, f f for your sake, you know, like, you know, starting from the pregnancy, you know, and the delivery, and then, you know, feeding you and, you know, uh, she is the most one who, uh, she is the one who uh, exerted the greatest effort for you. Then the father, then you have to be good as well to the next closest and the next closest, your brothers, your sisters, your relatives, and so on, as we will shed some light on shortly, inshallah. You know, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas had the Prophet's cousin. He said, I do not know any good deed which is closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than being good to the mother. So no good deed will make you <clears throat> closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than being dutiful to the mother. Let's uh, relate a little story. Or actually there are two stories and they are both little and they are both about Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu Sayyidina Abu Huraira was very dutiful to his mother. So they used to live in, in two houses, you know, next to each other, you know, door next to the other door. So whenever, and he was old, he was old, whenever he would come out his house, he would first, he would come out, yes, and go directly before going to the street, you know, and meeting anybody, he would go firstly to the door of his mom and knock the door and, and then say to her, Assalamu alaikum ya ummahu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you, O oh my mother, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you. Then she used to reply this, say, Wa alayka salamu ya bunayya wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And peace be upon you, O oh my son, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the relationship between them was very close. He loved her so much, and she loved him so much. And then he would tell her, Rahimaki Allahu kama rabbaytini saghira. May Allah bestow you his mercy as you have brought me up when I was young. So she would answer him, Rahimaka Allahu kama barartani kabira. May Allah bestow you his mercy as you are dutiful and good to me when you are old. Because he is old. He can do without her. She, he was no longer in need of her help, but he was still dutiful to her. So this is a very nice picture of the good relationship. You know, this he's like 50 years old, maybe at that time. And before going out, you know, to meet anybody, he had first to meet his mom and to say salam to her and to make dua to her. And then he would go out to meet anybody else. And he is not of 14 years old or 15. No, he was like maybe 50 years old. You know, this is the first story. The second story goes back, you know, uh, in the past more than this one. It's also about Abu Huraira and his mom. That actually she was not a Muslim and she didn't like to embrace Islam. But he was, was very dutiful and kind to her. And he tried and did all what he could do to call her to Islam and to make her be a Muslim. But she used to refuse. Every time she used to refuse. He spoke to her very nicely, too much times, but she used to refuse. So one day he spoke to her about Islam. Oh, my mother, you know, uh, Islam is the true religion. I, I, I have fear, you know. Uh, for you, if you don't accept Islam, then you may be punished, you know, in a very nice manner like this. So she got very angry and she spoke something bad about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was not Muslim yet. So Sayyidina Abu Huraira was very sad and he went quickly to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam weeping and he told him the story because he was very sad that his mom said a bad word against the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then 
he because out of his love for his mother and being dutiful to her though she spoke very harshly to him shouted at him and said bad words against him and the prophet وسلم, but he was very kind to her so he asked the prophet muhammad وسلم, to make a dua not for himself but for his mom he said oh messenger of allah make dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide abu huraira's mother to islam so the prophet muhammad وسلم, said allahu mahdi umma abi huraira oh allah guide abu huraira's mother to islam so he went you know expecting well because the prophet has done the dua again he went back to his mom's house before entering the house he heard the sound of water and his mother when she knew that he is on the door asked him not to enter now to wait so she was doing ghusl because she intended to embrace Islam then after finishing ghusl she called him to come in he came in then he she told him ya Abu Huraira inni ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah wa Abu Huraira now I witness that there is no god but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah so Abu Huraira was very happy of course and again he started to run quickly to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam weeping for the second time but this time was not weeping out of sadness but was actually weeping out of extreme happiness so the prophet when he saw him said oh abu huraira what the matter with you he said oh messenger of allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has responded to your dua and has guided abu huraira's mother to islam the prophet muhammad sallam made dua again and again for his mother for abu huraira's mother and for uh, Abu Huraira and he said very nice words about this and then Abu Huraira he was a very clever companion and all the companions were clever but Abu Huraira used to ask the Prophet especially for making dua for him and he used to you know to define you know make dua for me that so and so happens such and such thing happens so this time he made a dua he made a request he asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, O Messenger of Allah, make dua for me and for my mom again. Now he does not forget his mom. She has already embraced Islam. Why are you asking, you know, dua for her? Ask now this time for yourself alone. No, he's asking for himself and for his mom. O Messenger of Allah, make dua for me and my mom that all believers that come to know us or to, to see us or to hear about us that they have love for us that they love us that no, no believer does not at all no believer at all does not love me or does not love my mother so the prophet muhammad sallam and also he said oh messenger of allah and make dua for my, for me and my mother that we have love for all the believers and this is a very nice dua you know nice thing to be uh, you know that a person has in this world that everybody loves him and he loves everybody so this is a very good thing so the prophet made this dua and abu huraira then said that since then you know no believer uh, has come to see me or to see my mom or even to hear about us uh, you know without having love for us you know without you know feeling that he uh, he, he loves us or she loves us so this is a very uh, you know also expressive little story about you know the relationship between the dutiful uh, son and, and his mom or his parents generally it's a relationship of love even you know she was a non-muslim because sometimes some young men or maybe some uh, old people as well whose parents are still alive they may say oh but my dad he does not have the enough knowledge about this you know i know better than him so why should i respect him he has not achieved many things in his life for example even if he has not achieved many things in his life he has not joined for example 
so and so, you know, university. Now I, I joined this university better than him. He didn't do this when he was in on my age. No, don't say this regarding your father. You respect your father because he is your father, and you respect your mother because she is your mother. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu he used to respect his mom and to have patience with her, you know, and to desire, you know, good for her, calling her for Islam, you know, to have very good wishes for her, though she was not a Muslim. And in the Holy Quran, Allah, after commanding us to be dutiful to the parents, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if they, the only thing, the only thing that you must not obey your parents if they ask you to do is that not you but generally this is in the holy quran that if they ask their uh, son or daughter you know to abandon islam and to be a disbeliever then this is the, the only thing don't obey them but the same verse is telling Fala wa fi dunya ma'rufa. don't obey them regarding this single thing but still have good con companionship you know with them in this world be good to them in this world even if they are non-muslims and even if they call you to be a non-muslim and to live and abandon islam okay don't obey them regarding this point but still be good to them you know as sayyida asma bint abi bakr as siddiq radiyallahu anhuma uh, lady asma daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq asked the messenger of Allah O oh messenger of Allah my mom and her mother was not a Muslim she came to visit me and she you know uh, you know she had uh, you know good hope good expectations you know that I, 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 I would receive her and welcome her and serve her food and be nice to her so what should I do uh, should I connect ties with her and be good to her? The Prophet Muhammad told her, yes, of course, definitely you should do so. Though she was a non-Muslim, the uh, Asma's mother. You know, if we do everything in this world that we can do to compensate our parents, you know, what they have done for us, we will not be able to give them their rights fully. You know, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab once was in Hajj making tawaf. And he saw a man carrying his mother on his back and telling that, you know, uh, that he preferred to carry her on her back so that, you know, she's not harmed by uh, using um, other means, you know, uh, of transportation because may be difficult for her heart because she was very old so she you know may suffer you know from some uh, pains or something so he used to carry her on her on his back very quietly and to go around the kaaba making tawaf because she was doing her hajj and you know in in uh, you know if you are alone not carrying anything and if you are a young man it's you know you get very tired in in hajj making these seven rounds, you know, ashwat, you know, circles around the Kaaba. This very, you know, uh, you, all people get very tired. No one can carry, you know, you know carry, you know, a, a human being, you know, his mom. So this man, when he was seen by Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, he asked Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, told him, do you think that I have compensated her for her favors on me? So Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab answered, no, you have not compensated her even for one sigh. One sigh, you know, like, 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 like this. So even, you know, you know, for this very slight, you know, uh, thing, you know, you have not compensated her for it. So subhanAllah, you know, sometimes, again, sometimes, you know, you feel that what you are doing now is important. So you may not answer the call of your mother or father because you are chatting with one closest friend to you 
on WhatsApp, for example. So, oh, not now. I, I have to finish first. I cannot leave my friend now. Oh, my dad is always there. Uh, no problem. Let him call or my mother. And I, w I have to finish this first. So this is very bad as well. You know, even if you are doing something good, like praying, praying, sunnah prayer, especially sunnah prayer, and if your mother or dad calls you, you have, you are allowed, and it's better, and if you do so, that you cut the prayer and go and answer your mother or father. And even if you are st studying, you know, because they are not going to waste your time. You go and answer their call and say, yes, dad, yes, mom. Maybe they need you to do something for them. Okay, do it quickly, no problem. If it will take much time, if it is very necessary, then do it for them. Don't tell them that I am busy. No, do it, it for them because it is very necessary and they need it now and they cannot do it on their own. So they really need you. Okay, do it for them and go back to your things. And Allah will give you barakah in time and in your mind and abilities and we, you will achieve everything. Don't worry. You will finish your, your work and your study and everything. But if it is something not urgent, you know, and will take much time and you have something very important like studying, for example, uh, okay, you can very nicely tell them after answering their call, you know, and trying, if you find that this will take much time, okay, you can tell them very nicely, okay, but uh, I was doing so and so and uh, actually I don't have enough time, I have to finish it within one hour because then I will go to school, for example, or I have a, an exam tomorrow, so do you think that, and you have to speak like this, do you think that it's better if, uh, do you think that there is no problem if I can do this for you tomorrow or just once I finish, you know, uh, studying or something like this? Of course, they will say yes. Of course, they will say yes. And if they say no, then you have to follow what they have said. Why? Because if they say no, this means that that thing is very important. It's more important than what you are doing. Akhalas, you have to respect them and they care about you more than you care about yourself. Okay, they understand the situation better than you. Okay, then you follow uh, what they ask you at that time. So here, uh, Al-Hasan Al -Hasan Al Basri, one of the followers of the companions was very pious man, like a big scholar at his time, like the big scholar of his time. So one man told him, what should I do if I am studying Quran and my mother is waiting for me to have dinner with her. So she's not going to have dinner before that person, you know, comes back because she likes to have dinner with him. So he said, you must hasten and go and to have dinner with her and let her be happy for I see, I believe that doing so is better than to do one voluntary hajj, you know, just to have dinner with your mother who likes you to have dinner with her. <laughs> then also, you, 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 you know, you, it's, you know, this is a huge reward, you know, because you will sit with your mother or with your dad, especially when they are old, especially when they are old. Or at any time, you know, they always, parents always like to see their children, you know, around them, you know, respecting them, giving them concern. Because when you go and have your dinner with your mom or dad, it's not just, you know, having dinner. But it means that you really, you know, this is an, a symbolic expression of the concern and love that you give to your parents. Because if your parents all the time find you, uh, you know, uh, you don't care about, you know, uh, eating with them, then this is very hurting for them. For any father, if it happens with me, I will be, this will hurt me, definitely. If my, this is my son and he does not like to come and to eat with me, you know, okay, if today he is very busy, okay. Tomorrow he's not uh, in, okay. But, but you know, to happen regularly or to be his habit, no, this is very bad, you know. F uh, and all parents do not like this. So this Al-Hasan Al-Basri, 
was a very you know well versed scholar in Islamic knowledge and he said you know if you sacrifice something important definitely Allah will compensate you give you the God compensate but if you sacrifice it for sake of pleasing your mom who's waiting you just to have dinner with her then this is better than making one voluntary Hajj and Allah will give you all success at the same time you know lot of the success that we have in this world is a result of the dua being done to us by our parents you know when uh, you know when many people have very difficult situations and they ask their parents to make dua to them and they make dua to them then th their problems are solved why because the dua when it is done by the parents to the to the ch their children is not like any other dua is not like even the dua that you do for yourself their dua for you is better is much much better than your dua for yourself okay regarding the fathers the prophet Muhammad sallam has said rida allahu fi rida al walidi aw fi rida al rabbi fi rida al walidi the pleasure of Allah is in the pleasure of the father and the displeasure of Allah is in the displeasure of the father which means you cannot please Allah while you are displeasing your father if you please Allah then Allah is pleased with you if you displease Allah then uh, sorry if you please your father if you please your father then Allah is pleased with you. If you displease your father, then Allah is displeased with you. And in another hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam has said, Al-Walidu, the father, is the middle door of paradise. Which means, you know, the easiest way to go to paradise is through, you know, being good and kind and dutiful to the father. Then the Prophet said, then, if you like to lose it, then lose it. If you like to keep to it, then keep to it. Of course, you know, all of us must, inshallah, uh, keep to it. Inshallah, this door of paradise, which is the best door and the easiest way to paradise, because this is the middle door of paradise, and this is the, the, this is the door through which people who are dutiful to their parents or to their walid especially father will enter Jannah from you know even one man once asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallam O Messenger of Allah I have my own money I am I have grown up now and I have my work and I have got married and I have my, my own money and I have my own children but my father needs my money or some of my money so should I give him the Prophet Muhammad Sallam answered you and your money are for your father that if he asks anything from you you personally physically to do for him you have to do for him because all of you belong to your father and all your money also belongs to your father and this is uh, this uh, this case is only with the with the with the father uh, or the parents, you know, not with any other person, because they are the you know the people who have, you know, from the very beginning when you was not able or were not able even, you know, to speak, you know, or to walk or to to express yourself to do anything, you know, they used to help you and to give you everything. So when you are able to help them even with money you have to do so uh, because yeah, again because there was a time in the past that you were not able to do anything no money no power no you know no language no you you were not able to do anything and they used to do everything for you okay okay of course uh, if uh, you know regarding 
people whose parents have already passed away or one of them, still there is a chance to be dutiful to them by making dua for them. And you know, you know the hadith Prophet uh, in which Prophet ﷺ said that when the son of Adam dies, all his good deeds, you know, come to an end. You know, he's not reward, rewarded anymore for them, except for three ways, you know, like uh, a continuing charity, you know, if he has built a mosque, for example, uh, or if his son or his daughter, you know, gives a charity in his name after his death or after th their mother's death, then and this is a, and it is a continuing charity that its benefit continues then he will be rewarded for it even after his death and a beneficial knowledge you know if you have taught somebody beneficial knowledge then Allah is going to reward you for this even after death so long as this person is still benefiting from this knowledge and number three which concerns us more here is a righteous son or daughter who makes dua for him or her and in one hadith that a man will reach a high position in paradise and he will say oh Allah I know that my deeds cannot you know uh, raise me up to this very high degree in paradise so Allah will answer him this is you are given this because of the istighfar being done on your behalf by your son or daughter okay okay there is one hadith which tells that all sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not punish his slave for them in this world except being undutiful to the parents there should be a punishment in this world. This is the hadith. So it, it's very dangerous. You know, if we are undutiful to the parents, it's very dangerous because we will find the bad consequence even in this world, not only in the hereafter. Okay. So now, uh, as we have to do good to the parents, we also have to do good to the relatives, starting from our siblings, brothers and sisters. In the Holy Quran, Allah says, وَأُولُوا الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْضٍ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ And kindred by blood are nearer to each other in the Book of Allah. This is the Book of Allah telling that, you know, you have to be good to all people. But you have to be more good, you have to be better and better to your uh, Al-Arham, your kindred by blood and starting from your brothers and your sisters. And in one hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam said, do good to your mother and to your father and to your sister and to your brother and then to the next closest and the next closest. So we have to do good also to our siblings. You know, this is the nature of human beings that they have to be good to their parents and to their brothers and sisters. And that's why the, the pleasure that Allah has prepared for people in paradise, the dwellers of paradise, one part of it is that Allah will make them feel as if they are you know, brothers to each other, blood brothers. So Allah will take all hatred and resentment from their hearts in paradise and they will be like brothers, which is a sign that, you know, the basic, the very basic thing in this world, you know, that brothers or sisters or, you know, siblings, you know, must not have any bad relationship at all because the reward given to people of paradise, in paradise, is that they will feel that they are like blood brothers. So the verse reads, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ And we take out from their breasts all resentment, so they are brothers. Uh, 
uh, sitting on thrones fa facing each other. Let's, I am about to finish inshallah in five minutes, but let's take some examples for this good, good relationship between brothers or siblings from the stories of the prophets. You know, Sayyidina Harun, uh, Sayyidina Musa, alayhi salam, he was a prophet and he loved his brother, Sayyidina Harun, so much. And he loved for him the same as he loved for himself. To the extent that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed him as a prophet, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made dua for his brother to be a prophet like him. <laughs> Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Sayyidina Harun a prophet like Sayyidina Musa. So he said, وَأَخِي هَارُونُ هُوَ أَفْصَحُ مِنِّي لِسَانَ And my, and he started to tell about merits of his brother. You know, because sometimes, sometimes, you know, we try to hide, or some people try to hide merits of others, try to hide merits of their maybe brothers or a sister, you know, and you know, just to say, I am the best all the time. And you cannot do this. No, he will not be able to do it. I know for sure he has never or he, you know, he has never done it before and he's not able to do it. So this is a bad feeling that you must not have towards anybody. And especially you must not have towards your brother or sister. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he would tell, he, he did so. He told Allah, Allah knows the best. But he told this also. He spoke to Allah telling him, oh Allah, appoint my brother Harun as a prophet to verify me because he is more eloquent, eloquent than me in speech, in language. So he gave this praise to his brother Harun and he mentioned that his brother even excelled him with regard to using language and he didn't hide this and that's because he loved his brother, Sayyidina Harun. So this is a very good example, you know, to a favor or, you know, something good being done by one brother to his, his brother. And also he made dua for himself and his brother. And this is mentioned in the Holy Quran. قَالَ رَبِّ غُفِرْ لِي وَلِأَخِي وَأَدْخِلْنَا فِي رَحْمَتِكَ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ He said, Sayyidina Musa, oh Allah, forgive me and forgive my brother. And let us enter into your mercy and you are the most merciful of all the merciful. So, subhanAllah, he also made dua for his brother. And you know, even if your brother or your sister does something that you do not like, you have to do your best to forgive them. If you don't, you know, if you feel that this is, you know, is, is, is much, then <laughs> do you know the story of Prophet Yusuf? Okay, Prophet Yusuf, when he was very young, very young, like two, three years old, something like this, or four, his brothers took him on a journey and they told their father that they would, you know, uh, take care of him. So nothing bad will happen to him. But they, they were at that time, you know, shaitan caused them to do this very bad thing against their brother. They, they put him inside, you know, a, a well, you know, a well, a deep well. And they left him and they went to their father. And they told him, oh, my father, you know, the fox, the wolf, the wolf, yes. The wolf has attacked him and, and eaten him and he has died. So it's very extremely bad, of course, extremely so bad. It's a crime. And this caused Sayyidina Yusuf not to live with his, you know, family for long, for long until he is maybe like 40 or something like this. And then, because, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him power and, you know, and, uh, you know, and big authority. Then his brothers went to him and they didn't know that this was uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. But he knew, Allah told him. 
And at the end of the day, you know, he told them, لا تسريب عليكم اليوم. There is no blame on you today. يغفر الله لكم وهو أرحم الراحمين. May Allah forgive you and he is the most merciful of all the merciful. So he, for he forgave them after causing him for 40 years to be away from his family, not living with his father who loved him so much. And, you know, they wanted, you know, to destroy his life, put him in the, in the well. But he forgave them because they were his brothers. Because, you know, your brother is part of you. Your brother is part of you. If your brother is suffering, then you will be suffering. So it's your interest that your brother does not suffer, that he is good with regard to all things, you know, that all his conditions are very well. Because he's your brother, you know. You know, even, you know, if he has a problem, who is going to help him? You should be the one, you know. Like, for example, if you don't help your brother, if you have a young brother, and you don't help from him from the very beginning. Uh, okay, could you please bring this partition like this? I think maybe there is a sister coming or something. Okay. Okay. Okay, yes, okay, you can come in, sister, please. Okay. Okay, so it's very good that you help your, especially your younger brother, you know, like for example, instead of uh, laughing at him, if he cannot do his homework very uh, properly, as you used to do when you were on his age, and instead of laughing at him, you have to help him. This is one example, you know. Because if you laugh at him today, then when he grows up and he cannot find a good job, for example, because he didn't use to study properly, then you will be the one who has to help him financially as well. So you will suffer as well, not only him. So it's for your well-being as well, even, you know, uh, if we look at it from this angle, it's, it's good to you to be very good to your father, uh, sorry, to your brother or sister from the very beginning. Because if you help him when he is young, and if you forgive him when he is young, and if you maintain good relationship with him when you are young, this will save you many problems in future. And this love will be like, you know, you are planting, putting a seed in the soil, planting a tree. So if you have put it in the proper time, then after one year or two years, it will be a very nice and strong tree. If you don't put this seed in the proper time, then it will be always difficult for you to, to look after that tree, you know. It, it may not be a good tree in future. And you have to water the tree and remove bad things from for like, you know, insects. So you have to do this as well, especially if you are the elder brother uh, and also younger brothers. Of course, they also have to give respect to their elder brother, okay, generally speaking. And they have to know that he, he knows more than them because he's older than them. So he has to, they have to listen to him as well and they have to respect him. And if you need to consult anybody about a, an important matter, then you consult your parents and you consult your elder brother or, or sister as well. And you don't, uh, you know, you don't annoy him because when he is older than you, the way you do things is different from the way he does things. So if you try, you know, <laughs> it seems that you have some stories w with each other. So <laughs> I'm speaking generally. Generally, I tell my children the same, generally. Because, for example, Abdullah is my child, younger child, you know, because there is five years difference between him and Salahuddin. So Abdullah's mind, of course, you know, is still young. Salahuddin, uh, grown up now. 
So Abdullah wants Salahuddin to play with him in the way that he likes, Abdullah, all the time. So Salah, because he is the older one, I, I tell him, okay, it's your young, younger brother. You give him some of your time in the way he likes as well. Do things that he likes as well. So he does things that Abdullah likes. But then when he starts to do the other things of, uh, of his age, then Abdullah may, for example, uh, you know, uh, try to, to take him again. No, you have to be with me all the time. No, you know, you have, you have to respect, you know, the desire of your brother or sister. You know, okay, let's do this now that, 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 that uh, for example, uh, Muhammad likes. Uh, and then, uh, after um, 15 minutes, half an hour, when we finish, then, okay, we can do some other thing in the way that Omar likes. Or, if I cannot do it with Omar, okay, Omar will do it on his own. But I have to give him space of time, you know, to do things that he loves as well. So, he must not all the time, because he is my elder brother, be just with me and not doing anything for himself. He has to look after himself as well, you know. So... Always, you know, justice, it's justice, you know, in Islam and, and even logic, you know, be fair, be fair. Yes, he has to be good to you, but you have, you has to be good to him as well. So both of you, each side should do, you know, uh, uh, you know, things which are required from, from him. And then you meet, you know, in the middle point, inshallah. Okay, and uh, that's enough, inshallah. Jazakumullah. Yes. 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 No, if it is for the prayer, you have to complete the prayer. Yes, you have to complete the prayer. Yes. But you can, you know, if your intention was to prolong the prayer to read a big surah, for example, then, yes, you can short it. But then, immediately, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa sallam. And then, yes, mom, or yes, dad. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, but anyway, you know, this, this make, does not make a, a big difference, yes, yes, yes. Okay, the, the Rasul is the one who is given a message. And the Nabi is the one who is confirming the message given to a, a Rasul, a messenger. So to Rasul, you know, Risala is a message. Rasul is a messenger. So Rasul is the one who has been given a message. Nabi is the one who has not been given a new message, but he it just carries on, carries on, yes, yes, yes. Okay, Jazakumullah. That, well, Jazakum. It was a pleasure to be with you for this uh, few, uh, last few weeks, inshallah. And I hope that, uh, inshallah, yani, uh, we get benefit from this, inshallah, and to see you soon, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.